Hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to our super webinar. Like I promised you, my name is Malik Johnson for AlternativeMSRecovery.com, and I have the pleasure to have two great people with me and that know their stuff about MS. Like I promise you, you know me, I'm out there doing my due diligence and stuff like that, and I'm really, really proud and fortunate to come past two gentlemen who know a lot of stuff about MS like I do. And in this webinar, is seven must foods you have in supplements that will help get rid of your fatigue and stop your balance, pain, weakness, and bladder problems and get your life back. And you know what that's like when you have MS, because I have MS. So right now I'm going to introduce you <coughs> to um, Mr. Um, Scott Cartwright. Cartwright, are you there? I am here. I am here, and I am happy to be here. And first off, I want to thank you for inviting us to to talk to your MS listeners. It uh, it really is a treat when we get to to share our knowledge and share what we know with people that uh, that we feel that we can help. And it's also been really nice getting to know you, Malik, over the past little bit, and and to see how dedicated and passionate you are about bringing this kind of information. To your to your followers and and that great the the great site that you have uh, alternative ms recovery dot com so I so again I thank you and we are here to present like Malik said the seven must have foods and supplements that will help you get rid of your fatigue and stop your balance pain weakness and bladder problems and we one of the things that we left off on here is sexual problems we didn't want to put it down to we didn't want it to be you know freaking people out we're talking about sex but you probably know, uh, and our listener knows that uh, when you have MS, oftentimes that sexual problems are part and parcel of what goes on with you. And so, the foods that we're going to be talking about will definitely help <laughs> all those things, and, and it'll help you get your life back as well. One of the things that I'd like to do before we kick off, though, and get really into it, and, and I give uh, my background uh, to our listener, if you could uh, just there's a box there that says questions in it. If you could open up that box and just type in there for me, yes, or I can hear you, or, or hello, or something like that, we just want to make sure that we are being heard here and that we are not just broadcasting into cyberspace and only the aliens are picking us up. So if you could, uh, there's a box. Uh, I think you see it. It's in the control panel down towards the bottom. It says questions. That box is also the place that you'll get to use to ask any questions that you may have for, for Dr. Cartwright uh, during, the, uh, during the webinar as well as at the end when we have the question and answer period. All right, great. So I have I Can Hear You Fine here, smiley face. Thank you for that. Um, one thing that I would ask you to do for me, please, though, is if you ask a question, please put your name in there um, because, oh, thank you. We got it there, Omar. Uh, nice. Uh, thank you so much for, for letting us know that. But put your name in the box when you ask a question because it doesn't tell us your name because we like to uh, address you personally and answer your questions directly to you. So it seems like we are being heard. So we will continue on just a little bit about me before I bring on uh, Dr. Cartwright, the MS Health Coach. As I mentioned, my name is Scott Cartwright. I have a master's degree in public health and I am the founder and creator of MS Health University. It's a, a site I put together because MS affects me personally. My wife has MS, and we deal with the ups and downs and challenges and things that go along with that on a daily basis. And if you ever do have some time, be sure to check us out. Uh, that site is at www.mshealthuniversity.com. And so without further ado, I will turn it over to Dr. Rudy Cartwright, also known as the MS Health Coach, and uh, we'll keep things moving. Well, hello out there. I'm uh, Dr. Rudy Cartwright, and let me just tell you I'm happy to be here. I am a brain surgeon, but an expert in multiple sclerosis. And you're probably wondering, what does a brain surgeon know about multiple sclerosis? But during my over 40 years of training and experience, I've seen my share of uh, brain injuries and spinal cord injuries because of motorcycle accidents, bicycle accidents, car accidents, all-terrain vehicle accidents, and so forth and so on. 
And as it turns out, what occurs to the brain and spinal cord because of those accidents in a sh over a short period of time occurs in multiple sclerosis over an extended period of time. So that's how uh, I know a lot about it. And I really got interested in it several years back. Uh, my son, Scott, called me on the phone. At that time, I was living in Texas, still in practice. And he said, Dad, I don't have good news. Uh, my wife, my, uh, it's my lovely daughter-in-law, she has multiple sclerosis. And at that time, she was in the middle of her medical school training. And I said, don't worry, don't worry, don't fear. Just relax. I know what to do. But I had to do some additional research that I've always been doing uh, along the way and I put together a diet and supplemental plan for her to follow, which she did to the letter. And I ha I'm happy to say she finished her medical school training. And she also completed her four-year residency training. And now she's in practice. So that's, uh, that's how I got started in this. But then uh, that's where I was going to leave it, let it go. And I've done my duty to society by helping my uh, lovely daughter-in-law and my Scott, my son Scott's brother. Said, Dad, you got to share your information with others. And I said, No way, no way, oh, they are not interested in the limelight. And he kept hammering on me and hammering on me and hammering on me. And now I'm talking with you. So that's number one, how I got into multiple sclerosis and why I'm so passionate about it. All right? You gave in. You, you gave in. I gave in. <laughs> well, I'm glad <laughs> you gave in because it's, it's, it's great information. I know you don't like the limelight, uh, but uh, this really is great information that, uh, that you have for us and that you're, that you're sharing on our blog and with these webinars and, and different uh, courses that you teach. But so, Malik, let us hear all about you because you have a wonderful story as well before we get into uh, before we get into our information. Okay, hi, I'm Malik Johnson. As you all know, my members, and thank you all for signing up. As you know, I was diagnosed with MS a few years ago, and you know I know what it's like living with MS. I work a full-time job. I work in law enforcement. You know, when I was diagnosed, it took a long time for them to diagnose me because the problems were happening for about at least at least 15 years, 16 years, but every time I went to the doctor, they would look in different areas and they couldn't find what was wrong and, and, and looked in the wrong areas and said, yo, you're healthy, you're healthy and stuff like that and just send me home. And I didn't know that was an attack. And it was a minor attack then. So I would go on, you know, and stuff like that. As I went on, Later on, I was doing a lot of overtime, doing a lot of things in the music industry, stress and that and things like that, and eating fried foods and things like that, you know, Popeye's chicken and, you know, the unhealthy stuff. But it was delicious. I can't, I cannot lie. Then one day, you know, I happened to be out um, from doing a, a, a training with my dog, and I happened to experience my first major attack that sent me to the ground, it was like a spasm. It was like I was having a stroke, and I said to myself, I couldn't be having a stroke. I'm too young to be having a stroke. And I had a pretty decent diet. You know, I thought, you know, you know, a little bit of vegetables and a little bit of, you know, I ate a lot of beef and stuff like that, but I didn't really know about the, ba the balanced meal. I ate a fat diet. So I, I was nervous. I was like, what, what's going on? Am I having a heart attack? Am I having a stroke? So lo and behold, I started my mission going to doctors. And let me tell you, I went to 12 specialists. 12 specialists, and I was stuck with needles, you know, all types of EMT tests and stuff like that. But them would come out and say, you know, Mr. Johnson, you know what? We don't know what's going on. And they sent me to, then they sent me to a rheumatologist, and they tested me for lupus and stuff like that, and, and they just couldn't find it. And, you know, then I started just doing my own research. I started getting really frustrated. I said, well, I've got to take control of my own life. i got to take control of my own life. So I started doing research. And every time, you know, I started getting funny um, a problem with my walking, and I, you know me, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna start doing research. Problem with my walking, you know, stuff like that. And every time I went to, to, you know, um, symptoms that well, that was like for me, it would come up multiple sclerosis. I'm like multiple sclerosis. What is multiple sclerosis? Now nah, I ain't no multiple sclerosis. So I used to put it in the back of my head. 
mean, not to think about Richard Pryor and things like that and Montel Williams and stuff like that. I'm like, nah, I can't be multiple sclerosis. And then I would tell my brother, you know, like my brother Omar, I would say to him, man, it, it could be MS or something like that. And, and you know, and I, and I was like a little nervous. I didn't, I tried to put it off in my head. But lo and behold, I was going to chiropractors and stuff like that, and, you know, for them to adjust my back. And it wouldn't prove my gait would be all right, but then it would go back. And then all of a sudden, then all of a sudden, one, I was going to cancel my last um, exam with a neurologist. And he said, well, let me, um, let me um, look at a certain part of your spine. And I'm not a doctor. I don't profess to be a doctor. I think it's called a thoracic part of the spine. And um, um, he said, let me see what's going on there. And he, he um, did the MRI. And as I was waiting for my results, I, I made real good friends with the chiropractor, and I brought my, um, my, my DVD of, of my pictures of that. And when I, I left it with him, at first he looked at it, and he was like, no, nah, everything seems to be okay. So then when I was scheduled for my, um, my follow-up with him just to, you know, get my back aligned and stuff like that, you know, his face looked puzzling, me being in law enforcement. I'm like, what's up? You know, like, you can't, you can't lie to me. What's up? What's going on? He's like, I don't know if I want to tell you this. You know, maybe you should wait for your doctor. I said, no, listen, I, don't, I, don't, I, I deal with enough, enough stress, and I, deal, I like it straight. He said, um, it looks like, you know, you got some placking going on. And you know, um, you know, and um, it looks like multiple sclerosis. And I was like, multiple sclerosis, and I mean, that was, I mean, it hit me like a, it hit me like a boxer, like boom. And I was like, and I was just devastated. I was like in a brain, you know, a brain fog, and and, and I was, you know, um, and all I used to when I used to talk to my my friends and my brother and and my wife and stuff, and I used to say stuff like, I'm just tired. And I didn't know that I was going through fatigue. I didn't know that yet that that was fatigue, you know, symptoms of MS, and brain fog, everything just used to be, like, so fuzzy. So, lo and behold, um, the doctor, I went in the doctor, and he diagnosed me. He diagnosed me, he said, he said, no, he didn't diagnose me yet. He said, what I want to do is a procedure called a lumbar puncture, a spinal tap. And I said, you know, and I'm, I'm, li I'm listening to the doctor, because I'm, 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 I'm like, but I'm still skeptical, because now I done went through 12 top specialists, I mean, night specialists, top, you know, Yale University, I mean, nice places, you know, and I'm like a little skeptical, like, you know, but he didn't give me no literature to, to kind of like tell me like, you know, the, 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 the side effects of a spinal tap, you know, and so he made it seem like it was going to be okay, but lo and behold, when I went in to do the spinal tap, when they did the procedure, they tried the new procedure, they had me laying the wrong way, and I don't know why they did it, however, my doctor happened to come by and because the fluid was not coming out my um my um my spine, you know the cerebral fluid wasn't coming out my spine, and so the doctor I heard him because I'm I'm law enforcement here, so it, it starts to turn on again. I'm listening, and then I heard the doctor say, "Why do you have him, you know um 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 laying in that position? He's supposed to be and it's like, um we trying a new procedure, and I, and I'm like without my permission, you know I'm I'm like upset now, like you know what about the patient? So lo and behold. You know, they turned me around, and the fluid just came out, and it was clear. So I was like, okay, maybe I don't got, maybe I don't got multiple sclerosis. But that was just used just to confirm because the proteins that was going on in my body and certain things, you know, they was looking for. So finally, got the results. Took a, it took about two weeks or whatever. Went to him, and he said, you know, you got multiple sclerosis. And then all of a sudden, so I'm like, okay, but what is multiple sclerosis? First thing I'm going to say, being law enforcement, I know there's a cause and effect. So I said, what caused that? So when he explained it to me, he said it was like an allergy. And I didn't know nothing about MS, you know. I'm like, like an allergy, what is that? And he says, like an allergy, you know, a little inflammation going on and stuff like that. I said, a little inflammation going on, like an allergy. So, and then he said, well, we have these drugs. And he, and he, and he, and he, and he mentioned some ABC drugs. And his nurse brought in, like, I mean, about five pamphlets. And he was like, well, so I said, which one is the best one? You know, he said, they all the same. You know, just pick one. And that would make me really, really suspicious. So I said, pick one? Wow, pick one? I said, Doc, give me some time. Give me some time and let me go home and do my research. So when I went home, I did my research, and I started digging in, calling the nurses, calling up the pharmaceutical company, finding out the trials and stuff like that and the side effects. And as I was doing that, I was also reading their books, The Lancet, The American Journal, all these, all these doctors' books. And so I became a beast. I became a beast in research. Now, I mean, I was staying up like, I mean, kid you not, I would, I would wake up in the morning. I took time off of my job. I took like about a month off. 
And every day I woke up, I was studying. And that day, no lie, 14 hours. I would fall asleep reading on my Kindle of the books. So when I came back for my next appointment, I was equipped with information. So I started questioning the doctor about these drugs, and he didn't hardly know anything. He couldn't answer my question, you know, about these, you know, certain drugs. So I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not taking this. I'm not taking this. I'm not taking this medication because it's toxic to the body, and already my body is toxic. So why would I add an immune suppressive to my body and make me more susceptible to other diseases? And he looked at me. You know, then I asked him a question. I said, it, isn't MS like the attack of a myelin sheath and stuff like that and, and something going in far in the body? But can't you do certain supplements to help to regenerate the nervous system? And he looked at me like, whoa, you saw it. You've been studying. I said, yes, I've been studying. I said, Doc, this is what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go home and I'm going to study. And when I started studying, I read them all. I read them all. There ain't an MS book out there that's, that's, that's relevant that I didn't read. And, and, and the first book that I read was Montel Williams. And, 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 and to me, it's a great book for that time, but it set me, it set me up in a very, very depressed, depressing mode. And I was spiraling downhill, and I never really experienced depression. And what happened was my brother, my dear brother, who I love a lot, I love a lot, and he said to me, whoa. I'm going to send you something. And it was my brother, Omar Johnson, who sparked the fire. And he sent me some information. And I said, oh, my God. And people turned and started. It was, but it wasn't a lot of information. See, it wasn't a lot of information out there at that time, like people reversing MS and stuff like that and halting it. But it was hope. There was hope. So I grabbed that, and guess what it was? It was the swank diet. So the first thing I did was, was started implementing the swank diet. And the Swank Diet talked about red meats and certain foods. I'm like, you know, wow, food got a lot to do. I said, let me stop, you know, let me, you know, let me, let me try not to eat these certain foods. And I cut out red meat right away. This is because before I became a vegan and a, and a raw foodist. I, I stopped doing red meat and I stopped dairy. And immediately my, the brain fog went away, you know. You know, I wasn't eating no bread. And at that time I was eating pastrami and all types of stuff, and cheese every day. I was just clogging my system up. So, long and behold, I started feeling better and stronger. So I'm like, whoa. And, and as I'm going along, and I'm, I'm prolonged because I got another doctor appointment, so I come in, he said, so, Mr. Johnson, you know, you, have you decided what medication? I'm like, nah, you know, I, I'm still researching. Give me some time. And as I went along, a year passed, and then another year passed, and I started feeling better. Like I wasn't happy. I didn't have no other attacks. And now I start to learn about different supplements and stuff like that and how they help the body. You understand? So then I took a very aggressive approach. You know, I, I went, I said, I'm not doing no drugs. I'm not doing no drugs. I looked at MS as my best friend. I said, if I feed it the foods on a nutritional level, it'll quiet it down. But if I give it the wrong foods, it'll act up. And along the way, I would experiment but not deviate, you know, you know, and I took certain allergy tests to learn, you know, what my body would react to, what foods was. You got to learn your body. You got you to listen to your body to learn what foods might affect, you know, weakness and stuff like that. And, and trust me, I did it. You understand? So I started juicing. And at first, at first I became a vegetarian, you know, and at, it was kind of hard because I went from eating um, – um, ribeye steaks and lamb chops and shrimps and crab. Now, here it is. I'm going cold turkey. So now I'm having detox effects, and I'm like, whoa, my body's like, what, you know, what's going on? You said that old food. Now you give me what I want. So now I'm detoxing. I'm having detox symptoms. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm hoping, you know, what's going on? I'm nervous. Like, am I doing the right thing? And as I went through it, I started getting stronger and stronger. So I said, hmm, and, I, and I'm, I'm still reading along the way. I'm still reading books. I'm still gaining knowledge. I'm, and I consider myself an a, a MS specialist because I have MS. And along the way, and, I, and then I would get calls. My brother, my brother Rodney would call me up when people have MS, and, and then people at work and used to ask me questions. And I would say, and I'm, I'm learning these things. I'm saying, well, how about you try this? And then they, how about you, how's your vitamin D level, you know? 
once you check your vitamin D level, and their vitamin D level is low, and they'll go check their vitamin D level, and it'll be low. And I said, once you take some vitamin D and increase it, and then their symptoms going away. And then it started, the word mouth started going along, and I tell them right away, I'm not a doctor, and I started coaching people along the way, helping a lot of people. Like, people with MS would be like, you know, I've been taking Avenues. You know, I got rid of certain foods, and the, and the doctor will go into that. I won't even, you know, talk about it because he knows about that. I got rid of certain foods and stuff like that, and the brain fog went away. So I'm like, whoa, I have to let the world know about this. You understand how important foods and supplements can halt the disease and turn it around when you don't further, when you don't, um, um, further deteriorate. Do you understand? Put the flame out. You know, so then from there, it was like um, I was like, I'm going raw. I'm going. I'm become a raw foodist. I'm going raw. And then a friend at work, a coworker, said, No, no, you're writing a book. How you how you fought MS like a boxer and wouldn't go down. You ha- I want to hear everything you're doing. And you can't just tell people you went right into a raw foodist. And thank God I didn't do that. So <laughs> I became a vegan. And I became a vegan like one month. I'm not gonna lie. I became a vegan like one month. And I jumped into raw foods, and I started feeling amazing. I started juicing. I started fasting. I started doing colonics, and I started getting my power back. And, my, and, my, and the thing is, my cognitive level and my fluency became clear, and I became sharper. My skin started to change. And I said, it's something to this. And that's why I had to create AlternativeMSRecovery.com so I can incorporate all the people who's approaching MS from a health perspective. Not, and, and don't get me wrong, I'm not against the ABC drugs, but I don't take them. I don't take them. You understand? And, I, you know, they, they are effective. But I, I'm not, I, I, I couldn't tell you because I never took them, and I, and, I, and I won't take them. You know, I just felt like, hey, listen, I put it in nature's hand, God's hand first, and I look at nature. And I have animals. I have, I have cats and dogs, and, and I use the same approach on them, and I won't even talk about that story. And I was able to heal them, and I realized how, to, how magnificent the body is. Do you understand? I'm, and I realized, and I used to talk to my brother, talk to, you know, talk to people and just tell them. And then when I go through symptoms, not symptoms of, of uh, exacerbations and stuff like, but symptoms of detox, I'd be like, yeah, I'm having a moment right now because when you change your diet and do things like that, sometimes your symptoms might increase. But I'm going to tell you this, you just hold in there. You just, and it's going to take time. It don't happen overnight. People call me, hey, you know, Malik, you know, you went raw. I want to do it. You know, people with MS, so I went raw, you know, and stuff like that. Did it happen overnight? And I don't lie to them. I'm saying it's work. But as long as you do the positive things for your body, you can heal. As long as you feed the health side of your body, you can heal. Do you understand? Don't give your body, you know, certain foods that cause the condition to worsen and, 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 and a neurotoxin. You have to get them out your system, you know, because basically to me, MS is nothing but malfunction of the cells. You understand? Your cells, your mitochondria, ma- mitochondrial malfunction. You know, now you got to bring it back into homeostasis, into balance. And I don't want to, I don't want to steal the show, and and, and, and you know, because I got the guests on, and and, he's a, and 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 let me tell you, let me tell you, I people that I work with who happen to be listening in, who I have helped and have seen that even allopathic drugs could not help them, and I came along in a little bit time and, and implement it would work for me and say it may help you because I'm not a doctor and it has helped them. And they went to their doctors and they go to see, and, and here it is, the, the disease has been progressing, but here it is, they start working with me and the disease is halted. And then they said, well, this must be that, uh, you know, that new medication I gave you. And I'm like, I hope you don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? Because here it is, they've been dealing with these ABC drugs for all these years. And, 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 and so now you fill your body up, and now they are effective in 30% of the people, but what if you're not one of them? And that disease is a slow, I call it like a ninja, a silent assassin, because you think it ain't going on, and it's deteriorating your body. It's eating you away. So once I realized how to halt it, I said I had to write a book. And guess what? Because people have been emailing me for years, about when are you going to finish your book? When are you going to finish your book? I said, it's not ready. I could have just did it, you know. And finally, this month, I am concluding my book, How I Fought MS Like a Boxer and Wouldn't Go Down. You get it? Because I used to box when I was younger. You understand? I love boxing. And, and, and so, and, it's, and, it's, and I look at MS like when I come out, Malik Johnson, 
work with MS. Let's get it on. You understand? And then I'm hitting it with all the foods and the, the berries and the flavonoids and the kale and, and all that. You, you understand? So, I mean, I love it, you know, and I, and I, and I, and I have a passion for this. And I, and I love all my members, and I love everyone with MS because I know what we go through. So I'm able to communicate. I don't need, and not to say no disrespect to the doctors, no disrespect, but ain't no doctor going to tell me about MS. When I talk to MS, people with MS, we hand it off right away because I know what they're going through. Why? Because I have MS. You understand? So I became a beast at doing research. And I, until now, my wife, my brothers, they could tell you, I am consumed by it. I spend hours and I spend thousands and thousands of dollars on supplements, on, on approaches and food. I eat all organic. You understand? It's expensive. But you don't have to do that. But as long as you eat, put the right nutrients in your body every day, you can turn it around. And that's why I'm going to turn it over to someone who I came to respect. And I talked to a lot of people. And I happened to come across Scott and his father, Dr. Cartwright. And I said, holy crap. And it took me a while. And I didn't just, you know, because I do a lot of research. And, you know, there's a lot of people with stuff talking about, yeah, MS, you could take this and do this and all that and, you know, and, and, and stuff like that. And, 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 and then they take your money. You know, they don't know nothing about it. The first thing I ask them is, do you got MS? You know what I'm saying? Do you have MS? So what do you know about it, you know? You know, what, what do you, you know? And, and most of them times they, they, they're, trying to, they're, trying to, um, they're trying to sell you a product, and I'm against that. You know, I'm 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 a, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm pro for supplements. I'm pro for vitamin D. And me myself, Dr. Cartwright offers a great supplement that I happen to personally take on a daily basis called a Essentials. The Essentials, and you know why I took them because along my journey, all the supplements that I've been taking, guess what? It's in this one supplement and other great things that I learned about from him. And I'm like, I got to turn. I, the world has to know about this. The world has to. Everyone with MS has to know about this supplement because this is what you need in your body every day to function right, to function right. And, and as you know, we have a lot of things going on with MS. That's why they call it multiple sclerosis, multiple scarring, okay? And I'm going to turn it on, and I, don't, and I could talk all night, but I don't want to take it from the doctor because it took me a while to get him on, and I, and I doc. I thank you, and Scott, I thank you, you know, for, for giving me this time, and I'm going to turn it over so my audience could learn a lot from y'all, and I appreciate your time, sir. All right, Malik. Uh, thank you for the kind compliments, but as you know, I've always said it's not about me, and it's not about, you know, a, a specific product. It's about the science behind the product and what the science can do for you when and if you use it. That's what it's all about. It's all about getting better. And I love uh, when you said it's not going to happen overnight because it takes time. MS is a problem that's really like a volcano. It's been smoldering under the surface for many, many years, and it finally surfaces. And all it indicates is that there are a number of things that's been going on with you as a person that hasn't been quite right in terms of the things that you eat, things that you drink, things that you put on your skin, all kinds of things. But anyway, here I just want to let everybody out there know that I am a, grad, a medical doctor, and I graduated from Baylor College of Medicine, and there's my uh, medical uh, school degree. And then I did my... Uh, um, internship in general surgery in, uh, you know, at the Bentop General Hospital, the Methodist Hospital. These are all located in the Texas Medical Center in Houston, Texas. And, of course, I did my long uh, neurosurgery journey, and I'm, I'm happy to say that I completed that successfully. Incidentally, I, I did my medical school in three years. I don't suggest anybody going through medical school do that, but I did it, and it's just too uh, racking. But at any rate, I just thought you needed to uh, know uh, that uh, that what I say, I can bring, I can document it, you know, with my slides and with my diplomas. 
Okay, you've already heard from Malik. So here's my disclaimer. This is what we call housekeeping. And I am Dr. Rudy Cartwright, a medical doctor with over 40 years of training and experience. But the information we are sharing with you today is for informational purposes only and should not be considered as medical advice. I have not seen you as a patient and cannot give you medical ad advice. So please be sure to consult your doctor before you make any changes to your medical routine. Okay? All right. Let me tell you my approach in bringing you scientific information. And this is the way my slides are arranged. At the as here, at the top of this slide, it gives you the journal where the article appeared. And Malik, you know it said New England Journal of Medicine, right? Right, right, right sir. And it gives you the date and so forth. It gives you the page numbers and, and so forth. And then in bold letters, it's got the title of the article. In this case, it's inflammatory cortical demyelination in early multiple sclerosis. And then it gives you the authors. And sometimes I put the institution down there, but sometimes they may have five or six different authors. They're from five or, five or six different institutions. And I don't have enough room on the slide to put the, the, the next point, which is the main point of the article. This is my approach for bringing you good research that has people, great people behind publishing these uh, articles. Okay? Now, this particular slide, the title, Oxidative Damage in Multiple Sclerosis. And what do we know about multiple sclerosis? It is a disease of the central nervous system, and it has persistent chronic inflammation. And this inflammation has been going on a long time. And associated with the chronic inflammation is profound oxidation. So when you get this persistent uh, chronic inflammation plus profound oxidation, you're going to get a breakdown of the myelin or demyelination, and you are going to get injury to the cell that makes the myelin, which is called the oligodendrocyte, and eventually things keep cooking along. You're going to get neurodegeneration or nerve cell degeneration, and you don't want that death, death of the cell. You're going to get death of the cell the nerve body, and the axon, that long extension. Consider uh, a nerve cell like a, a light bulb that's hooked up to an extension cord. you got that light bulb, that's the nerve cell, and you got that long extension. That's the axon. And, of course, when you look at the, uh, uh, when you take that insulation from around that extension, that insulation is the myelin. And when you do that, 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 uh, that light won't work. Well, that's the way it is with multiple sclerosis. So let's look at a neuron. Let's look at its extension, the axon, and then the oligodendrocyte, and the myelin. And this is where the action is when it comes to MS. That red arrow to the left is pointing to the body of the nerve cell. And then it's got that long extension, that that blue arrow, the first blue arrow, it's pointing to that axon. And then the black arrow, it's pointing to that black dot, that's the oligodendrocyte that makes the myelin. And that's where that second arrow, is pointing, that second blue arrow is pointing to. It's pointing to the myelin. When you have MS, you have destruction of the oligodendrogliocyte, destruction of the myelin or demyelination, and then eventually destruction of the nerve cell, 
and its extension, and we call that neurodegeneration. It's a bad actor. So what you want to do, you want to shut these things down. And you can do it. You can do it or help do it when you put the appropriate things in your mouth. You got to watch what you drink, watch what you eat, watch what you put on your skin, watch what you think, and things will work out quite well for you. And the, the, the good testament is about uh, Malik himself. He gives a great testimonial on how he approached the problem. I hope you're writing questions down because I want to answer those at the end of this uh, presentation. Now, here's the point that Malik really made, and I had to go back and get this slide. I, I put this slide in one of my talks a couple of years ago. And that is, whatever personal choices you make in honoring your body's innate capacities, none is more important in determining its current health and future stamina than the quality of your daily diet. You are and you become what you eat. Any comments about that, Malik? You're right. I mean, hey, hey, you're you're one hundred and fifty percent correct, sir. Okay. You understand? Well, I'll, I'll take ninety-nine. <laughs> All right. It's very important, yeah. Now, and guess who else agrees with us? Who else? <laughs> the FDA. Oh. This is hot off the press. November eighth. 2013, it's in the Federal Register. Go look it up. That's why I put the uh, the, uh, the website number up where you can put it in your browser, and it'll take you to this to this to this uh, article. It says, based on new scientific evidence and the findings of expert scientific panels, the Food and Drug Administration has tentatively determined that partially hydrogenated oil, that's P-H-O, which are the primary dietary sources of industrially produced trans fatty acids or trans fats, are not generally recognized as safe for any use in foods based on current scientific evidence establishing the health risk associated with the consumption of trans fats and therefore, that PHOs are food additives. In the next paragraph, I'm not going to read it. All they're saying is, look, we're going to take these things off the market so that you don't get them in your food. They're horrible actors. They've known it since 2003, and now they've decided to act on it. Does it have a bearing in terms of? Multiple sclerosis? Yes. These trans fats, they cause inflammation of the arteries that feed the brain and the rest of the body. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. Inflammation of the arteries. They want to address, oh, it causes heart attacks and strokes, but when you really read the long articles that have been uh, there are about 5,600 that's been published on the subject. These trans fats cause, they cause inflammation of these small arteries that feed the brain. We got, we got a name, special name for them, blood-brain barrier, which I'll get into later on. But the reason I bring this up now is that it is recognized that what you eat makes a big difference in terms of your overall health. And it's not just cardiovascular disease. You pick a disease, just pick one. It's uh, important that you know that these trans fats are injurious to you, and especially when you have 
multiple sclerosis. Any questions about that? Okay, I'll keep going. So essentially, you've been on a highway. I call it the EMS highway, from which you want to exit. This is what you want to do. You want to get off this highway. You want to slow this process down. You want to stop it and turn your life around. And it can be done. Mr. Johnson is living proof. So how are we going to get off this MS highway? Well, let's talk about foods and supplements. You need to make sure you get in your everyday diet. Let's just make sure of that. All right? Here it is. I know you look at this potato and you say, oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. I eat French fries all the time. The wrong way to get potatoes in your diet. You have to either broil them or bake them. Okay, boil or bake the potato. It is part of a wholesome diet. If you boil it or bake it, or broil it rather, or bake it. But here's the deal. We got to talk about the blood-brain barrier because this blood-brain barrier is really like a, a gated community. There are certain things that wants to get in the brain, and the certain thing the brain says, nope, you can't get across here, you, you'll do injury to me. And this blood-brain barrier is that gated community. And as long as it's, it's healthy, you will have good vision, good strength, good bones, and what have you. But when you have multiple sclerosis, this blood-brain barrier is disrupted. Bad things get across that shouldn't be getting across. So what should you want to do? Let's help this blood-brain barrier get healthy, okay? And we can do that by doing what? Putting catalase in our diet because in this study and it concerning optic neuritis and as you know this optic nerve is an extension of, of the brain it is not a nerve it, it is an extension of the brain it's a misnomer when they say optic nerve it's not a nerve it's part of the brain well what they did in this experiment they said, you know, if we put catalase in when we disrupt the blood-brain blood barrier, it uh, slows that process down. And not only that, when we put catalase in, we reduce demyelination. And that's very, if you could just back up one side there, Dad, uh, that's very important uh, because demyelination is one of the main problems when you have MS. Uh, but the thing that I wanted to just point out is, is that the catalase is in those potatoes that we hadn't made that link yet, that you find catalase in the potatoes, and so that's why you want to make sure you get as much potatoes as you can. You know, I don't, you can't you know, have tons and tons of it, but catalase is in potatoes, so make sure you get some potatoes in your <laughs> diet daily. That, that's correct. But when you eat potato, make sure it's either baked or broiled. When you fry them, smash them, the chip them, whatever way they they've lost, they've been processed out. The catalase has been processed out. But the important thing is that the catalase will reduce the demyelination, okay, and it will help the blood-brain barrier heal itself. Okay? Yep. What about onions? Quercetin. That's what's in the onions. Quercetin. Okay? 
So what? We know that quercetin is found in different kind of plants and fruits and vegetables and what have you. But the good part about the quercetin is that it is an anti-inflammatory molecule also. It will help shut down the inflammation. And Malik talked about, you heard him touch on the mitochondria. And the mitochondrium is the power plant of the cell. It's like the power plant of your car is the engine. This mitochondria is what makes the cells work. They're in there doing the work. It's making energy for you. But when that mitochondria, when they are not working properly, oh, you don't have as much energy as you ought to have. So you are fatigued. You can't stand up. You can't walk. You can't go to the bathroom. You can't do a lot of things that you love doing, like um, going to a mall without being tuckered out, going shopping, taking your kids to their baseball practice or soccer practice or football practice or basketball practice. Why? Because you don't have any energy. So what do we want to do? We want to make sure that we eat some onions. Again, don't fry them. You French fry them, up, oh, gone, quercetin is destroyed. You want to broil them, bake them. So quercetin is an important molecule. And the other thing about quercetin is that uh, it can fight against certain viruses. And don't think for one minute that it is just one virus that you are fighting against. These viruses work together. So one guy weakens you over here and he says, oh, thank you, let me get over here on you. And the next thing you know, they got you, especially during the flu season. So quercetin is an important molecule that uh, you want to put in, and you can get through those uh, molecules, the quercetin molecules, through onions and other plants also. What about glutathione? And I think if my memory is ser serving me correctly, Mr. Johnson mentioned glutathione. And for all of you who love asparagus, keep eating it. It is full of glutathione. That's important. Why? Because glutathione is another molecule that the body uses and makes to combat against this oxidative, what we call oxidative stress. All that means is, is that we breathe in oxygen and the cells are using the oxygen and it has to have these little byproducts I won't get into them right now. I can, I can give you a couple of them. Uh, hydroxyl radicals and uh, hydrogen peroxide. Those things will eat at the membranes of the cell and won't allow the cell to function properly. And so we want to put things in that the body needs, that it's been running behind on. We want to put things in that will combat these oxidative molecules. And again, as it says here, glutathione deficiency leads to widespread mitochondrial damage everywhere. Widespread. So you want to put that glutathione in or you want to eat it, and you can by eating that uh, asparagus. You've heard us talk about eating oily fish. And the big guy is say, oh, eat salmon. It's wonderful because the oily fish have what? Vitamin D3 in them. That's, that's, that's a given. And the other thing is the salmon has niacin in them or niacinamide or nicotinamide, whatever you want to call that 
different names that, for the same uh, molecule. But here's the thing about the oily fish, and we should eat them because they do have uh, vitamin D3 in them, which is a great molecule when you have multiple sclerosis, vitamin D3. If you took three and a half ounces of fish or salmon, which is a, a handful or a serving, guess how much vitamin D3 is in that three and a half ounces? Here it is, almost a thousand international units. They don't tell you that, but you have to go out there and research it and find out how much it's in the in the oily fish. And this is the the uh, salmon is the gold standard, and the other oily, oily fish they go down from there. So even though, yes, they do, these foods have the vitamin D3 in them, they don't have near enough. But a little bit is more than no bit. But so this fish, this uh, salmon, it's got niacin in it, and it's important. Why is that? because this niacin, nicotinamide, and what have you, again, it helps the mitochondria make energy, and not only that, it protects the seeing part of your eyes, the rods and the cones. It protects them. Let me just say this while we're on this eyes uh, uh, subject. When you have MS, it is well documented that your vision is constantly going downhill. In other words, your vision is getting less and less and less and less over time without your having to experience an exacerbation. That is well documented. So you want to put things in there that's going to protect you and your eyesight. If you love to drive, then, or if you love to walk without stumbling over things, make get your eyesight in good shape, and you can do that. Putting that nicotinamide in, or niacin, and these these rods and cones, their mitochondria will make more energy to do their job, and their job is to do what? Help you see better or maintain good vision. And if you've lost it, recover the vision that you've lost. It is possible. Don't let anybody kid you. I, I have good, uh, uh, good uh, back uh, uh, good feedback on individuals that have told me that their eyes have gotten better by doing certain things, and I know that. They have good proof because they've gone to their optometrist who checked their eyes out. Documented, well documented. So nicotinamide, niacin in that salmon is, uh, is a good bet. What about catechin? You drink things. In America, we don't drink a lot of tea, but if you go to uh, foreign countries, they, they drink lots of tea, especially in the U.K., they drink a spot of tea. And that green tea is full of catechin. That green tea is full of catechin. Is that important? Yes. And the reason being is, there's another molecule out there that you eat in your foods. I'm not going to get into it now. It's another long story. But it's called uh, glutamate toxicity. Well, I can tell you. It's monosodium glutamate. Okay? It's in your food. But they know how to disguise the names. If it says hydrogenated protein, just say glutamate. Anyway... 
we know, or it is well known, that is that glutamate is toxic uh, to in retinal diseases. And when you put catechin in, it reverses the effects of the of glutamate toxicity. I mean, this is wonderful stuff. Now, uh, Mr. Johnson indicated that um, he was doing it, and he still does, his research day in and day out, day in and day out. And when I, when I first spoke with him and he gave me his story, I, I said, wow, I've been doing all of this stuff for the past, you know, since 1992, researching day in and day out. I got over 10,000 articles I've read and stored them away. I go, why did I do that when I could have run in, you know, came across Mr. Johnson and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have had to do that. Of course, I'm kidding because uh, you have to be knowledgeable when you're going to talk about something. But the important thing is this catechin will reverse the effect of the glutamate toxicity on the retina. Ah, bok choy. My favorite. <laughs> okay. All right next to bok choy, you can put Brussels sprouts. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. It, they're both good. Excellent. And I, I had Brussels sprouts there. And my son Scott went over the uh, my some slides and he put bok choy in there. And I, I saw that and I, I almost put it back to Brussels sprouts. But anyway, bok choy. It's a great leafy vegetable, full of cysteine, okay? Why is that important? Because when you're tired, you really don't know what's going on, what the body needs. So you got to put those things in that have been shown on a scientific basis to be beneficial to the human muscle. And N-acetylcysteine is one of them, and it helps shut the... Uh, oxidative stress down. All right? Okay. And so, again, you eat this stuff, then you go out and you do your exercising, and guess what? Your performance is a lot better, and that's what you want to do. You want to keep getting these muscles in great health. And don't think that getting your muscles in your toes or your feet does not have a bearing on the mu muscles in your hands and in your fingers and your neck and what have you. All of them are hooked together. They're hooked together. They're all designed to keep you oriented in space. So the muscles in your toe has to know what's going on in your hands and in your neck and the muscles that move your eyes. That's a given. But the important thing is we want to, in acetylcysteine, the body will take that cysteine and says, oh, I need it over here, and it will love you for it, and you will love it for it because you'll start to feel a lot better. But again, remember, it takes time. It won't happen overnight, but it will happen. You just got to stay at it. Hesperidin, oranges, fruits, wonderful. Hesperidin is a wonderful molecule. You can get it in your oranges, okay? Why is hesperidin important? Because when you have multiple sclerosis, you have a great chance of having inflammation involving your colon. So you may have uh, these bowel problems someday. Uh, you can not go to the bathroom and you think what you need is something that will uh, work your bowels. And what you really need is something that will get your bowel back into great health, and you're not going to have a bowel issue without having a bladder issue, 
because both are hooked up with the same nerve. And when you are helping the inflammation of your colon, then you will find out that, wow, I can sleep better through the night. But again, it takes time. What we are doing is addressing the health side of you. When we strengthen the health side of you, it takes over again. And we can do what? Slow the process down. Stop it and turn it around so you can get your life back. So you can do all the things you used to love doing. Going shopping, taking your kids to the movie or taking them to their games or whatever they do. Going out, partying with your kids getting up in the morning and not feeling fatigued, not feeling drained. I know you are tired of being tired. And how can you have good balance when you're tired? The muscles can't do what? Keep you upright. So, Hesperidin to the rescue. Well, let me no. ask you, uh, jump in a couple uh, and get a couple of questions in here. So is there any catalase in sweet potatoes? I looked that up and couldn't find that it was, but I'm still at it. I get, I've gotten lots of questions about sweet potatoes. And here, here's the kicker, finding out the scientific name of the sweet potato makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So we say, oh, that's a sweet potato. So the question is, all right, you type that in, not much comes up. But when you type in the scientific name, ah, found it. So that's what I, why I'm chasing certain things down. I got to know what's the scientific name of this sweet potato. And then... I can uh, answer that question. That's okay. a great question. And, uh, well, can I jump in real quick? Yes. Real quick, Doc. Well, they have a book, a book, you know, anybody want to write this down, that talks about healthy food. It's called The World's Healthiest Foods, and they'll tell you every nutrient in that food. And it's by George, and I'm going to spell the last name, M-A-T-E-L-J-A-N. And it's a central guide for the healthiest way of eating. And I use it myself in the beginning of me learning about the nutrients in the foods. And it's an excellent book. So if you want to pick it up, it's excellent. I recommend it. I'm, I'm glad. I've, I've written it down. Okay, I'll Doc. I'll get it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll, all right. And then what about hesperidin? So is, is there hesperidin in lemons and limes? Yes. Uh, yes, hesperidin is, is found in uh, a multitude of plants and vegetables. I just put one up. You know, you can't dress up everything. Uh, okay, right. let's let's find out where it is. Oh, it's here. It's here. And uh, I I just picked the orange just to the main one. Okay. Yeah. And then what about squash? Did you come across any research about that? What might be uh, great in squash? I. Uh, no, squash is, is that long list of things. You'd be surprised. I got about 300 and six articles that I'm in the process of doing now. And, uh, uh, and once I, it, sometimes it may take me three or four months just to find out one thing about one item. I have to line them up and find and determine which one I think is the most important. Uh, what I do know about squash is number one, it has color. And when a vegetable has color, you can count on it being full of what we call bioflavonoids. And but the important thing is what are the bioflavonoids that are present? And again, Sometimes they'll say, okay, eat this, it's healthy, but then they don't tell you which flavonoid is in there. So, yeah, they're in there, but the question is, which one? 
Okay. If well, it has right. color, if well, it has well, color, okay. then it would be healthy for you. Can I and say I something else the, to add on to that, Doc? Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I, I eat a lot of squash. They have different varieties because it's squash season right now, and they're delicious. I mean, you got delegato, you got butternut squash. And, you know, they, this, this, that's all going to be in my book with the recipes. You know, I use them all the time, you know. And certain, like, butternut squash, you can eat raw, you can make a soup, or you can, you can, you can steam it. And it's delicious. It has a lot of nutrients in it, vitamin C, all times, numerous. Like I tell you, once you once y'all read that book, you'll know, you know, you'll learn a lot of things. And, it, and I'm telling you, it does the body great, you know. And sometimes I just come home, and they have, they, they have the Delgado squash, and it tastes better. And if you like sweet potatoes or you like um, Japanese yams, it tastes like it tastes ten times better than the sweet potato. And you can eat the skin with it, and you just bake it, and it's delicious. And that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> you make, you're making me hungry over here. <laughs> oh, it's good. I don't know, y'all. It's good. It's good, man. It's good, man. All right. And then uh, lastly, just a couple questions. You were talking about the FDA having banned trans fat. Um, do you think they'll do the same with um, genetically mo modified organisms, mm. GMOs? Um, <laughs> first of all, let me make clear, they're in the process of saying they're going to ban it, but they're getting comments. So that, that if they ban it, it will be about probably another 55 days from now. To ban GMOs? To, no, to ban uh, the trans fats. Oh, the they trans haven't done fats. it yet. Okay. Oh, okay. They haven't done it yet. Now, concerning GMOs, as you know, it was on the ballot in the state of Washington and in California. And to get them to the, just to label and say, we put GMO foods on the shelf, on the label. It lost. It's a matter of if you have enough funds to advertise against or for something, you can outweigh the other person talking. I was thinking about GMOs, okay? Genetically modified organisms. Uh, some months back, I read a comment. <clears throat> I read a comment by the FDA. And that comment was, at least the person who printed it, said the FDA the FDA stance on GMOs is that the organism has not been has not been materially changed really now why would I spend billions and billions of dollars or certainly millions of finding out how to genetically modify something if I don't materially change it but that's legal talk, you know, materially change. You haven't done any change. We changed it, but we didn't change it. Okay, but then why go through the trouble? But the other thing is, if you didn't change it, why don't you just put it on the label and say genetically modified foods? <laughs> yeah, well, if you didn't change it, you shouldn't care about telling people you, you didn't change it. You shouldn't care about telling people you changed it. But yeah. now... Here's the kicker. This is my way of thinking. When you genetically modify something, okay, that means you have either taken something away or you have added something to that gene. Does that make sense? Think about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. I am going to genetically modify this. And when I modify it, I am going to change something, either what it does or what it doesn't do. Okay? Essentially, when I genetically modify something, I am adding to or taking away something. And so it's the same as if 
it's one of those foods that I shouldn't be putting putting in my mouth. It belongs in the same category as something that's potentially harmful. And it is potentially harmful. Let me tell you why. Because we did not, over the past millions of years, we did not evolve with these genetically modified foods. And if you didn't evolve with them, then they are potentially harmful. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way it is. Yeah, if you, no, that's... over the past millions of years we come along and we've been eating certain fruits and vegetables and all of a sudden we got this new thing out there that we didn't evolve with. Well they have a study they have a study on it and if you can look it up in other countries that they already seeing the um the cause of genetically modified foods and what does it do to the body, and they have banned it. Just like, yeah, you know, and, I mean, and now, you know, as far as banning the trans fat, I mean, now the United States is banning trans fat. you got so many countries that banned it that years ago. So are you going to wait for them to do that? I mean, for, do you make a decision that, that I can't do that, you know? Well, it, 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 I'm not knocking things one way or another. Yeah. I'm just saying don't try to hmm. squeeze me in a way of thinking. Right, right. Because if I modify something, that means I changed it. Right. Okay? Yeah, that's, well, that's, that's definitely right. true. If you if you modify it, then you definitely it, change it. You well, changed it. it for, yeah. So I was going to say that. So that's it for the question for right now that pertain to that area. I think that was that's really been some great information that you shared there on the different nutrients and the the fruits and food items that those nutrients are in, and now I'm supposing our listeners probably wondering how can I start getting all these nutrients and, and how can I start easily getting all these nutrients and supplements now so I can get back to doing all the things that I used to love doing, just what you have up here on this slide. So let's see, um, let's see if we have the answer to that question. What's the, uh, the next one? All right. Okay. Here's the next one. And that's the next one. So that is the, the, the supplement that you created. Uh, it's called the essential that you formulated. And what it is designed to do is to help you get rid of, of your MS symptoms. And it, it, it's something that you, you created because back when we were teaching some courses, if you recall, we, you were making recommendations for catalase and, and hesperidin and all these things. And our MS recoverers were having a hard time finding those things places. And they contact us, I can't find any, you know, catalase in the amount that I should be taking it. Can you help me? And I said, well, it looks like we're going to have to, to put something together that has all these things in it that you're recommended. And what it is designed to do is to strengthen your health side, especially when you have MS, because as my dad mentioned uh, just a little bit ago, uh, we really feel that health and disease exist side by side, but when you have MS, the disease side is stronger. And what we want you to do and, and what the essentials helps you do is to increase and to strengthen the health side of you so that it can keep the disease side of you in check. And so uh, all the things that we talked about, the catalase, quercetin, glutathione, the niacin, the catechin, the cysteine, the hesperidin, all of those things are found in the essentials in the right amounts that you need to be taking them in so you don't have to worry about running all over town and trying to find these different items, these different ingredients. You can get them in one convenient location in the, uh, in the essentials. And so one of the things that we wanted to, to point out to you that the essentials, so it's um, a supplement that you take, it's a capsule, you take uh, two in the morning, two in the evening. And what that has in it, it has over, uh, as if you were to get 111 potatoes, that's what this picture is trying to show you here, over 111 potatoes is actually what is in the essentials. So that, that same amount of catalase that you would find in 111 potatoes is in the essentials. On the next slide, you'll see that it, quercetin, one of the other main ingredients that's in there, you'd have to eat three, uh, just a little bit more than three uh, onions in order to get the same amount of quercetin that you'll find in the essentials. The next slide talks about 
of the glutathione. So you'll see here there's 18 bunches of asparagus, and those bunches each have about 12 or 14 stalks. I don't know what you call those stalk pieces uh, of uh, asparagus in there. So that you'd have to eat 18 bunches in order to get the same amount of glutathione that's found in the essentials. And then also on the next slide we talk about the niacin. And so the one piece we talked about would give you the 1,000 uh, international units, nearly 1,000 international units of vitamin D3. But in order to get the niacin that you would need and the niacin that's in the essentials, you'd have to eat two pieces of salmon to get that. And then one of the last things that we talk about is the catechin. So in the essentials, when you're taking the essentials, as if, if, as if you were getting three plus cups of green tea on a daily basis. So everything is in the essentials that you need to take care of the mitochondria, the power plant of the cell, to take care of the, the eyes, to take care of your bowel and bladder issues, to take care of the fatigue. All of those things you'll find in the essentials, and they're in uh, large quantities the same amount that you would find in these certain amounts of food. Yeah, but let's make a point. We want to make sure that they continue to eat a balanced diet. And right. That what exactly. we're talking about are supplements, to supplement your diet. Supplement and it is needed diet. when you have MS because you have been having MS smoldering for years and years and you didn't know anything about it. And Mr. Johnson indicated how many years he they were trying to it took him to make the diagnosis that he was running behind on a lot of different things lots of different things but the important thing is is he's a living witness that you can do what slow the process down stop it and turn it around you can get your life back and all you got is time okay all right I didn't mean to take, get back in here. No, no, no. It, it's important to point that out. It's important. So the, on the next slide, it, the question is asking what you're probably wondering, what is the bottom line for the essentials? Well, the essentials cost $69.95 plus $8.95 shipping and handling, and that's $9.95 international, and that's per month because you would get the essentials on a monthly shipment. So that's a total of $78.90. But because you're on this webinar now with us and because we wanted to do something special for um, Malik's followers and listeners, we wanted to invite you to become a, a member of the Essentials VIP Club. And um, what that is is that gives you a $30 scholarship every month off of the cost of the Essentials. We said, hey, we need to do something for, for Malik. He's been so great to us and shared a lot of great information with us, and he's hosted us, so we wanted to do this for you. So that brings the price of the essentials down to just $39.95 plus, again, the $8.95 shipping and handling. And so that brings the total to $48.90 per month, and that would be on a monthly shipment that you'd get, um, get delivered to you so you don't have to go out anywhere and, and purchase this. And so we have a guarantee that you may not know a lot about us since you, you, uh, this may be our first time being exposed to you, but we always stand behind everything that we do and everything that we recommend to you. And our guarantee is that you will get better on the essentials or we will give you a free health consultation. Uh, my dad charges about $500 an hour to do MS health consultations. Um, and if you're on the essentials for, for four months, you give it a good go because, like we said, this is not a silver bullet, and the change is not going to happen overnight, but it will happen. And if you give it, you know, if you give it the old college try with us and stick to it and do it for 120 days, four months, and you don't feel like you're any better, Dad will jump on the phone with you and make some further recommendations on things that you can do in order to continue to get better and better because we're, we're not here to take your 48.90 a month. We're here to make sure you get better and that you get back to doing all the things that you that you really used to love doing, and we know that you can get back doing those things because we've, we've seen it with our other students. One of the things that you'll get here, you'll see on the slide, is a bonus when you get the essentials. We did a question and answer webinar with some of our private clients. That uh, webinar lasted about two and a half hours where we just answered question after question after question. And we're quite certain that you probably have some of the same questions that some of our other students had. And so you'll get access to that question and answer webinar when you get the essentials. And that has a value of $97.
And so what you're going to get is you know, the essentials that we talked about, VIP membership in the uh, VIP club for the essentials, which gives you the $30 scholarship off of the cost of the essentials every month. Uh, you're also going to get the two and a half hour question and answer session where you're going to get all your questions answered by listening into other people's questions. And like this one, we will definitely be sure to invite you to upcoming question and answer webinars. Sometimes we do just webinars that are question and answer. As I mentioned, there is no content, but we just jump on the phone and answer any question that you that you may have. Uh, just to tell you just a little bit about what some of our current MS Recovers are saying about the essentials. Says, uh, the person says, since I found out about you and using gluten-free food and dairy-free products and the information you've supplied about using vitamin D3 and the essentials tablets that you've supplied, I can honestly say that my life has turned around. I have no fatigue and I'm getting stronger and I do have you on a pedestal, Dr. Cartwright. You have seriously proved my consultant wrong because when he realized how much I've improved and why, I've shown him my essentials. Uh, in my essentials bottles, he was very impressed and he told me to keep taking them. The next one says, hi, I just want to let you know that after taking the essentials tablets now for only two months, I feel stronger, more balanced, less foggy head, and generally much better than I have since uh, January of 2010. I do have times when my head feels dizzy and I need to be careful when I look up or just sitting down on the sofa and relaxing my head back. Maybe you can suggest something for the dizziness. So that, that, that's something we need to, <laughs> to start working on, one, one for dizziness. So that will be the next one. Uh, and then moving on, some of our other MS uh, recoverers are, are saying, hi, Scott Cartwright and Dr. Rudy Cartwright. I'm so sorry I was out when you called the other day. I wanted to speak to you personally about any upcoming events like webinars or other information about the essentials. I told you when I take the essentials, I get a small burst of energy, and the same with my strength. It lasts about an hour. I'm starting to walk a little further from 15 minutes to 30 minutes and I'm putting it down to the essentials. So in all, I'm very happy with the essentials. Thank you so much for caring so much. And then lastly, hi, Dr. Cartwright. It's only been one week since I began taking the supplements you sent me. Already I can feel a difference in my energy level, ability to stand for longer periods of time, get more accomplished, and a brighter, even more positive outlook than previously experienced. So we just wanted to let you know some things that, that our MS recoverers that are actually on the, uh, on the essentials are, are giving us in terms of feedback. So the next slide. So what we want you to do to get the essentials is go to www.alternativemsrecovery.com. You will find uh, pictures of the essentials there, and you can click on that. Um, banner, if I'm not uh, mistaken, picture Malik and our listener will be able to get the essentials. So again, it is at www.alternativemsrecovery.com. So without further ado, there are a couple questions that I have here for you. Dr. Cartwright, one of our MS recoverers, is asking um, what can you say about, uh, for those of us that have had our walking affected negatively, like a compromised gait as well as poor stamina? Well, again, uh, there's just several things you have to do. And you have to do it without fail. It's not one of those things that you approach, well, I'm going to cheat a little bit today and let it go. Just remember, a little bit adds up to do, uh, adds up to be a lot of bit. First thing you do, you have to get that gluten out of your diet. So if you eat anything with wheat, barley, and rye, it's a no-no. It's a no-no. And of course, you got to get the gliadin out, which is the kissing cousin of the gluten, and you get that through uh, milk. So those you, you got to get gliadin, out. You you broke up gliadin, is that what you said? Yes, yeah, gliadin, G-L-I-A-D-I-N. Uh -huh. Got to get that out of your diet also. Grow accustomed to reading labels. If they have a lot of things on the label that you don't know what they're talking about, you ought to get on the phone and call the company and say, what does that mean? Speak English. Okay? The other thing, 
in terms of your walking. What you want to do is to you want to exercise, and you can do that just by getting some simple squeegee balls. You know the little, little rubber balls that kids play with? They're about the size of a, of a tennis ball. Get one or put a, a blue one or a red one. Get a red in the blue one, a red in the right hand, and a blue in the left hand, and just squeeze them. Squeeze them time and time again. And that will help you. That will help your your balance because when you're doing that, you are also helping what goes on in the legs. The other thing you can do, and I haven't talked about it, you need, uh, I've never mentioned it to Malik, and that is we have what is a, an eye exerciser. And the muscles of your eyes are hooked in with the organ of balance, which is the cerebellum, and they're both hooked in with the vestibular system that keeps you oriented in space. So when you use the eye exerciser and, and, and you're using it on a daily basis, 15 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes at noon, 15 minutes in the evening, you would slowly but surely over time start to get your balance back. The reason I didn't say anything about it early on, this was all this was about supplements and foods. But the, you asked me this question, I I gotta mention it. But that's what I that's where I would start. And uh, give yourself about six months, see what happens. And then keep good notes. You can't beat keeping good notes. And that is what did you eat today and tomorrow you felt lousy. You got you have to know that it came from something in that food you ate or may have come from that. So you have to watch that. And what you want to do is filter out the bad and keep the good. Filter out the bad and keep the good. So exercise is important and a little bit adds up to be a lot of bit. And so you exercise those small muscles of your eyes and make Malik, you'll have to call uh, call Scott about that. I'll tell him how to get a hold of the eye exercise. But, but the important thing is you can and will get better. Exactly. Okay? You, you definitely will. So I just want to point out to you, if you have a question down there at the bottom of the box, there's a, um, a little area that says questions. And if you just type your question in there, I will ask Dr. Cartwright, and be sure to put your name in there so that I can uh, address you by your name. And we'll answer as many questions as we can here. We're going kind of late here, but, but we can answer a few more here for you. Um, so Mary is asking, do you have an opinion on low-dose naltrexone and how it might benefit MS? Yes. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Low yep. dose naltrexone. There's oh good God. scientific evidence that it benefits. Okay, those who have MS. Okay, great, great. And so make sure it, you it, make sure it's the low dose form, four and a half milligram, not three milligram, but four point five milligrams in the evening. LDN, low dose naltrexone. Can I touch on that a little bit, Doc? Pardon? Can I touch on that just a little bit with the yes, LDN? Yes, okay. Please. The LDN, the LDN is a great. LDN is great. Now you need to do your research about it. It's excellent. To me, it's the most effective non-toxic. Okay. The only side effects you might get some vivid dreams and stuff like that. I talk to a lot of people, and there's a great movement going on. You know, like I said, I do research all around the world. The UK is a big, big movement. And trust me, the first somebody newly diagnosed. I personally would recommend them taking that. Do the research. You'll see why, and that's all I'm going to say. Do your research. It's out there. Like the doctor said, scientific proof. And they just don't have enough money, and, 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 and it's cheap. See, it's, it's very inexpensive compared to the, the, to, to the ABC drugs, you know, that run you like $2,000, $3,000. But what happens is what happens when your insurance runs out, and you don't have no insurance now because you've got disability now. Ah, 
you got to know where to go, right? I mean, that's all I'm going to say. No more. <laughs> all right. Well, we appreciate we we really appreciate that that feedback and and the comments. So don't feel like you're taking over. It's it's great information. Okay. So um, Jeff is asking. Jeff says the Paleo autoimmune protocol restricts nightshades, potatoes. What's your opinion on that? I my opinion is is um, based on my research. If you if you prepare them properly, bake or broil, you're okay. That's my opinion. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, okay. for somebody with MS, I eat sweet potatoes, and they do not bother me at all. They are a staple to my diet, and, and I even juice sweet potatoes in some of my juices I do. So I have no problems with that. So I can only speak for, for me with MS, and it doesn't bother me. But, like, but you got to do, you got to see what you might be. It might have a different reaction in somebody else's body, so you got to listen to your body. Right, and what works for one doesn't work for others. We know that it's not a cookie cutter, and I have uh, spoken with many people that, are, that do the paleo diet, and they, they say it's a great thing. And, and so if you're not familiar with the paleo diet, it's the caveman diet, so you just eat yeah. things that cavemen would have eaten back in the day. And right. so back in the day, p potatoes would have been hard for a caveman to 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 get and then to cook. You know, it's not a lot of cooking and things. You know, cavemen just have basically boil stuff. So um, so that's that's what you could eat. But but like you said, Malik, it's it's different, and you really have to try it and see what what's uh, what's right for you. Um, I think that the, the, that your point is that, that the catalase has some really great things, uh, does some really great things in your body, and and it's not really the potato that you're getting. You're just getting the catalase, the great thing out of the potatoes. But if you're worrying about not eating potatoes, you could you know get the good without having the bad the bad part of it. Right. It's probably the starch and all those other things that are that are the problem in the potato, um, in the paleo diet, not necessarily the um, the catalase. But again, so I have a question here about the essentials. Um, again, that essentials is at uh, www.alternativemsrecovery.com. Let me also tell you how you can get in touch with us if you uh, have any other questions or anything like that. Um, that's at our help desk, our support desk. That's support at help coach help desk just like it sounds, support at H-E-A-L-T-H-C-O-A-C-H-H-E-L-P-D-E-S-K dot com. And so with that, I think we had better wrap it up. We've been going on for a little bit here. We don't want to get the gong from the webinar people here because we are going over our time. So I will... Uh, Turn it back over to you, Malik, for some closing. And, Dad, if you have anything else, you'll say. But I will um, sign off myself here and just let you know that I'm getting some messages here saying thanks to all of you and thanks. Uh, appreciate the information. So uh, it's over to you, Malik. Okay. I thank all my members um, um, for joining in and taking their valuable time. And also I thank um, you, Scott, and I thank you, Dr. Cartwright, and also members Right now, I'm writing an article on LDN right now. I've been working on it. It was like a little gift, but I'm just going to let it out. And, and personally, I'm going to let it out. And it should be done. I've been working on it hard and giving you all the information about it. I've been doing the last research on it for like the last few months, and I have a lot of valuable information on it. And personally, and let me say one more thing, I do take the essentials myself. It's, I added that to my protocol, and it helps me a lot. I mean, you know, even though I do, you know, I've been doing this for a while, you know. So anything anything that you do good for your body is going to help you. Just remember that. And thank you, Doc. And thank you, Scott, for taking the time out of your busy schedule for my members. Thank you for having me, um, Malik. Okay. Thank you, sir. All righty. So you take good care, all right? I appreciate it, y'all. God bless, everybody. Stay healthy. Get strong. I'm there for you.